everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we have a real kitchen basic. Today I'm going to revisit my flour tortilla recipe and I'm gonna show you how to do it all over again because we made them in 2013 and I think it's time for a bit of an update. So, flour tortillas it is. I can't wait to show you how this all comes together. Today we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remake my homemade flour tortilla video that was from 2013. But I thought, considering the current climate, making homemade tortillas might be something that would be super simple and uh, fun for everyone to learn how to make if you've never tried making them. Just a little bit of flour, a little bit of fat, a couple of amendments, and some water. And that's it. You just need a hot skillet and you're good to go. But what we're gonna start with here, I have four cups of all-purpose flour. You don't wanna use self-rising flour here. I don't ever use self-rising because self-rising has ingredients in it that I don't want in there when I buy my flour. I'm gonna add those things to it as needed. A half a cup of the fat of your choice. You can use lard, which is my preference, but I don't have any today. So we're gonna be using vegetable shortening. You can use butter if you want to, but it's gonna give you a bit of a greasier end result. You can use oil here, but you only wanna use a third of a cup if you're gonna use oil. We're using a half a cup of solid shortening. I have a quarter of a cup of dry milk powder. This is optional but it makes the tortillas really nice and pliable and delicious and supple. If you can leave it out if you don't have it, of course, um, and it's not going to totally affect the final result. I have a tablespoon each of baking powder and salt, and then we're gonna end up with at least one cup of hot water. Now, I just have water as hot as I could get it out of my tap, no need to boil it or anything or heat it up in the microwave, um, but I have measured approximately a cup and a half here because I don't know if I'm gonna need more, depending on the weather in your area and the, um, the moisture content of the flour or how long you've had it stored, you may need more water. To start off, we're gonna mix all these dry ingredients together. So there goes our salt, our dry milk powder, and our baking powder. And I'm just gonna give this a bit of a whisk to incorporate all these ingredients together. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in our, our vegetable shortening, our solid shortening. And uh, I had mine in the freezer, so I have had it sitting out on the counter for a while, so I'm hoping it's soft, and it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this into the flour mixture, like you would if you were making biscuits like you would cut your butter into your flour mixture. And you just want this to cut, be cut in very well, small peas, coarse grain, that kind of thing. So I'll be right back when that we've achieved that texture. Okay, I've got my flour and my fat all incorporated together and I'm not gonna be too concerned with whether or not it's like super well incorporated. You want them to be you know, you want it to be in there, but if you got some big uh, clumps of the shortening, I don't think you should worry about it because the next thing we're gonna do is add our warm water. And I'm gonna hold back about a half a cup from there. And I'm gonna come in here with my dough scraper. And yes, I'm gonna be mixing this with my hands. You can also put this on your stand mixer you can cut the shortening in with your paddle attachment and then you can switch to the bread hook if you like. I wanted to do this all by hand today only because it's super simple and let's be real. Most grandmas who make tortillas are, are making them by hand and so. Now you can see when you get your hands in here this is not moist enough. So. I'm gonna go ahead and add the remainder of this water. So that was a half a cup of water, so we're up to a cup and a half. I do urge you to start with one cup. Move on from there. Just get your hands in here, start mixing it around. When it comes to a nice ball of dough, then you're gonna to wanna to take it out and knead it. You're not gonna to wanna to add any more flour here. You're just gonna to want to work your dough by hand, if doing by hand, five or 10 minutes, until your dough is nice and supple, 
and slightly tacky to the touch. This is too tacky to work with at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knead this in the bowl for about five minutes and then I'm going to allow the dough to rest for 10 minutes. This is going to help all that flour to hydrate properly so that we can come back, divide our dough, and roll our tortillas out with very little to no extra flour. So I'm going to go ahead and knead this. Just I'm just going to do it in the bowl. You can take it out and do it on your counter. No big deal. Up to you. You do it the way you want to do it. So I'll be back right before we're ready to let this rest. All right. It has been just over five minutes. The dough is gorgeous. You see what a difference, just a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of elbow grease helps you attain the perfect texture of your dough. I can touch this, I can pinch it, it's not sticking to my fingers. And that's the one thing you wanna be really careful of, not adding too much water or flour because you may have been very tempted when you started kneading the dough to go ahead and add more flour because boy, this is really wet dough and I think it needs more flour to soak it up. But just give it a minute and it turns into this beautiful, supple ball of dough that we're gonna turn into tortillas. Now, I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes. We're gonna come back and divide these up we we'll start rolling them out and cooking them in a hot skillet. So I'll be back in just a, just a minute. All right, I went ahead and I divided up our dough into 16 somewhat equal pieces. You know, you guys just make it into a disc, cut it into 16 pieces, easy peasy. Then you're just going to go ahead and roll them into balls and set them on a plate. I have one ready to go. I'm just gonna cover this dish with a bonnet, set it off to the side so that they don't dry out. We're just gonna roll these. Tortillas, really, I like them not terribly thin, but I don't like them so thick that they're gonna be like bread. Show that custom rolling pen I made you. Yeah, it's part of a closet rod. <laughs> now, we're gonna be using these for tacos, so I'm making taco-sized tortillas today, but you can um, divide your dough any way you like and make larger tortillas. Um, if I make a burrito sized tortilla, I do try and get like 10 to 12 out of it. It's really up to you. And if they're not perfectly round, you know what? That's okay. You know why? Because when things are homemade, they're not always perfect. But you can see um, how they look. They're very thin and that's exactly how we want them. So I'm going to go ahead and roll these out. I'm going to layer them on a plate with some parchment paper so that um, they don't stick and then we'll go ahead and we'll start cooking them up. I got all of our tortillas rolled out, 16 in all, and I just did it between pieces of parchment so that I could get that all done at once. I like to do one task at a time. I had some parchment strips in my drawer so I went in and I used those. I do find the parchment to be very helpful. I have my skillet, my, my griddle, I have my griddle set on the highest temperature it offers which on this induction burner is sear. So it's around 450, 500 degrees. You want to put it down and then you want to start looking for these little bubbles. Sometimes it's going to give you a really big bubble. Sometimes it's going to give you a series of tiny little bubbles, which might gross people out, but that's mm. just how it works. This is a good indicator that you got really good hydration on your dough as well as really good incorporation of the shortening. So when it starts to look like this, you're going to want to go ahead and flip it. That's perfect. Give it a little press if you like. Um, and then cook the other side. This doesn't take very long, maybe 30 seconds per side, if that. This is not a task that you want to start doing and then walk away from it. And there's one of those big bubbles. And you can flip it and you can, it will deflate when you put it with its siblings. But I have a little casserole dish with a flour sack towel and I'm just wrapping them up this is going to keep them very warm until you are ready to serve them. If you have a tortilla warmer, 
then you can go ahead and use that. I don't have one of, that's one of the things I don't have. So again, you're just gonna put it down and you're gonna watch it very carefully. Once those little bubbles start to appear on the surface, you'll know it's time to turn it over. When you see those little bubbles, you can flip it over and none of my tortillas are perfectly round and I'm okay with that because you know what? We're just gonna make tacos out of these and they're gonna get eaten. So it hardly matters what shape they are. But these are gorgeous tortillas. They're beautiful and soft. They're gonna taste great. And I just know you're gonna love them. If you've never made tortillas before, this is a great time to take a minute and learn how to do that because then you'll have that, that skill in your repertoire. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my last two and I'll be back and I'll show you what these all look like and we'll have Rick give him a taste. I wanted to show you, first of all, all of our tortillas are done and they are in here resting in a lovely warm blanket. And this is just a, you know, an eight inch square uh, casserole dish that happens to have a lid. I don't know about you guys, but uh, no sponsor here. I'm just letting you know, this is Lock and Lock and I love their containers. They're the best. They have a gasket in them and they're fabulous. They clean up really great, but shout out to Lock and Lock. I just love them. But I went ahead because like I said, I don't have a tortilla warmer. I really don't use, I don't make tortillas that often. So I really don't merit having one, mm -hmm. but this is a way we can have a tortilla warmer without having a tortilla warmer. So I just lined my casserole dish with a clean flour sack towel. In fact, this is brand new. And, um, I just kind of made a nice little blanket for them to sleep in. This keeps them warm and they're actually really hot and supple and soft and perfect for making tacos for dinner. Um, we got 16 out of this batch. They're fabulous. And are you ready to taste one? I have to. I knew you would be, but we'll just rip one in half and you guys can see how beautiful it, the layers are coming right apart. And uh, here you go. What do you think? Mm. Warm tortillas, they're, they're hard to beat. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Mm. I can eat all of those. They're fabulous. Mm. But I'm gonna save these for our dinner. We're gonna be having uh, baked tacos for supper. I'm gonna be making some baked tacos out of some of these and then the rest we're just gonna have regular tacos. Um, I'm gonna share with you guys that recipe as well as how I make my beef and bean taco filling and look for those videos coming up soon on the channel. And that is how you make flour tortillas and they're not really that quick they are a process and they do take some time but they are well worth it and if you can't get your hands on tortillas there's no reason why you can't make them yourself because they're super easy and in the end I think that you'll just fall in love with them so I hope you give making homemade tortillas a try sometime soon and I hope you love it and until next time I'll see ya.